اللهم انا نحمدك ونستعينك ونستهديك ونستلهمك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى ونشهد ان لا اله الا انت الواحد الاحد والفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله بين يدي صاح بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا اللهم صل وسلم عليه اللهم صل عليه صلاه دائمه الى يوم الدين وصل على اله وصحابته ومن والاهم واهتدى بهديهم واستنى بسنتهم ودعا بدعوتهم الى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم اما بعد عباد الله اوصيكم ونفسي اولا بتقوى الله اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى في السر والعلانيه والمنشط والمكره لعلكم تفلحون يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد واتقوني يا اولي الالباب لعلكم تفلحون Brothers and sisters first of all I praise almighty Allah the creator sustainer and cherisher of the worlds who describes himself above all as all compassionate all merciful so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us to reflect and meditate on this most important attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is all compassionate he is all merciful and by doing so we also should inspire ourselves to reflect the beautiful message of islam which is all a reflection of the divine mercy irhamu turhamu show mercy to those on earth so that you gain the mercy of the one in heaven today inshallah the arab say li kulli maqam maqal there is a message appropriate for every occasion there is lot of discussion going on in the media and in various forums about the issue of gender in islam and this is the time for us muslims to really understand the proper islamic concept it's not enough for us to blame the west for everything we are suffering from blaming them will not resolve the issues allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said inna allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusi allah is not going to change the condition of a people unless and until they are willing to change their inner conditions so we need to take responsibility to improve our condition on all levels physical material spiritual moral individual social family community level and we to take charge we need to take responsibility to reflect on what went wrong and how we can rectify it it is in this spirit i want to mention talk about gender relations in islam or more precisely the status of women in islam when we talk about the status of women in islam we need to stay clear of two extremes deenullah bayn al-ghali wal jafi the religion of allah strikes the balance it works the middle way avoiding both extremes right and left so there is when we talk about women there is a so called secular paradigm a western paradigm devoid of the divine revelation the light of revelation where they presume they conceive of women man and woman as rivals competing so man it's me woman it's me this rivalry pitting man against woman and pitting woman against man is the secular paradigm and of course many of our so called muslims who are westernized go for it 
So they want to do everything, women want to do everything that men do. And men want to do everything women do. Now, as opposed to this, we have a spiritual paradigm. That's true of all revealed religions. And Buddhists and Taoists call it yin and yang, meaning complementary roles. In Islam, this is emphasized by the word az-zawj. He's the one who created human beings are pairs, male and female. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He created both of you from a single soul. You proceed from one another. So male and female, they proceed from one another. And complementary roles. This is yin and yang. This is the paradigm of Tawheed. There is a unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the unity of creation and unity of male and female. It is in this spirit that we should look at the Islamic teachings. And Islam was way more progressive and advanced than all of these societies when it came, appeared in Arabia. Look at the world when Islam came. Turn right, left, east and west. Everywhere women were in a, occupying the bottom. They were despised. They were treated as cattle, chattel, as doormat actually. And there comes Islam. They were denied of their rights, their voice. According to the laws of Manu, a woman cannot read the scripture by herself. Man has to read, husband has to read it for her, or father has to read it for her. This is the law of Manu, the so-called sacred law of the Hindu religion. Of course, I don't, I don't think it is revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because even in Hindu religion, there are concepts against it. Because we believe our revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and people have tampered with it, distorting it and disfiguring it because men want to play God on women. When you turn to the Christianity, it's the same thing. Christians and Jews blamed Eve Hawa for the original sin. And according to, you know, if you study the the rabbinical literature, they, they talk about the curses. Curses for women. Some say it seven, some say it nine. I'm not here to enumerate, but the root cause of the curses afflicting women is woman was the tempteress. She is seduced. She was the one responsible for tempting Adam alayhi salam to eat of the forbidden tree. And there comes Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals that no, both of them sinned and both of them turned to Allah begging his mercy and both of them were forgiven. You find no mention of Hawa alayhi salam Tempting Adam alayhi salam. <coughs> both of them sinned and both of them turned to Allah for mercy and both of them were forgiven. You see? And Islam empowered women to such an extent. Look at the difference, different style. The Jahiliya style and the Islamic style of interaction between male and female, between husband and wife. When the Prophet وسلم, shifted to Medina, Umar ibn Khattab saw so a big difference the way his wife is talking to him. Because in, in Makkah, she could not argue, she could not talk, you know, so boldly. But she comes to Medina. And Umar ibn Khattab saw the changes in his wife. 
Because when he decides something, sometimes argues and questions him. And she asked, he asked her, how dare you? Where you got this? How come this change in you? And the wife said, go and ask the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of course, Umar runs from one wife to the another. And of course, and he learns that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam allowed his wives to argue, to speak, to because they are equal. She has a voice. She is not voiceless. And there comes the Muslim community today. It's almost agreed upon among many people here. Majority of Muslims today. Sautul Marati Aura. The voice of woman is Aura. She should keep quiet. This is the law of Manu. This is not the law of Islam. Qad sami Allah. Qawl allati tujadiluka fi zawjiha. Wa tashtaki ila Allah. Surah Al-Mujadala. Allah has heard her. Who talked to you? Tujadiluka fi zawjiha. Who argues with you concerning her husband? Wallahu yasma'u tahawrakuma. Allah is hearing the conversation taking place because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to console her and treat her husband with respect and appreciate him. The issue is not resolved according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah ordered Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately sending down the revelation that the man what he did is wrong he must redeem himself otherwise he is guilty of a major sin violation kafara and he has to take her back because you know that he said in a fit of anger from now on you are like a mother to me according to the arab custom of the day if somebody says to his wife you are like a mother to me he cannot cohabit with her uh, the wife complains to Rasulullah, I came to this man, married him when I was young, I gave him children, and now I am old, this is how he treated me. He shunned me in saying these words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately sends down the divine order for him to redeem himself, to repent and take back his wife after paying kafara. Itamu, it's kafara, it's you know, either fasting or feeding the poor. You see? Now, how Islam empowered women? Did Islam teach us that woman cannot speak up? Compare yourself. You are now in Canada. What would happen if I am on the member and a woman stands up from there and challenges me? All of you will shun her. This was not the way Prophet taught. He empowered women to such an extent that Caliph Umar making a policy statement on the member and there stand up a woman says Umar you have no right to do that. When Allah has revealed in the Quran, you cannot put a limit on mahar. Man is free to give whatever he wants, even if it is a mountain of gold. And who are you, Umar, to put a restriction on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not restricted? What will happen to a woman now in Haram today, Mecca or Medina or anywhere in the world? She will be shunned. Because we assume that woman has no voice. Sautul Marati Aura. Voice of woman is Aura. Should be kept secret. Slow voice. She should not argue. She should not talk back. Did Aisha Allah not talk back? Did Aisha question Rasulullah? You see so many traditions. Once the Prophet tells her, everybody has, 
two companions, Shaitan and Malak. And the Prophet asked her, did your Shaitan visit you now? So, what? Everybody has a Shaitan and Malak? He said, yes. How about you, O Rasulullah? You have the same way? You have a Shaitan in you and a Malak in you too? Then Prophet said, please keep quiet. I am the Messenger of Allah. The Prophet smiled and said, yes. My Shaitan, I have knocked him out. He has surrendered and submitted. He is not going to whisper this kind of evil suggestions to me. You see how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, always you read about the conversation that is going on between Rasulullah and Aisha radiallahu anha. One time, they argue, they argue and argue, issue is not settled. What did the Prophet say? Because I am a rijalu qawwamun ala nisa, men are commanders over women. This is how somebody translates it. Men are the commander in chiefs over women. <laughs> Men are the maintainers and supporters, providers. This is how Ibn Abbas and others explained it. Added responsibility. It is not, it is not a privilege. Added responsibility. This is how they understood it. So Rasulullah told Aisha let's bring someone who will listen to me and listen to you, a neutral person. So she said, yes. Bring whoever you want. Said, you suggest. So the Prophet suggested Umar ibn Khattab, Abu Ubaida, Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu anhu majma'in, she denied. She refused. No, because she thought Umar was so tough. Abu Ubaida will be tough. How about your father? She said, yes. Okay, so Abu Bakr comes. And the Prophet told her, you talk. Aisha Allah said, you talk. Provided you say the truth. On hearing this, Abu Bakr Sadiq slapped Aisha Allah. Said, this is the way you talk to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam smiled and told Abu Bakr, this is not the way. And now we say we are allowed to spank and hit women. Said, this is not the way to settle any dispute. You know, we can handle our case. So what, see, let's, let's handle it. We will be able to handle it ourselves. You know why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did that? To teach me a new lesson. Not that Rasulullah wanted somebody, you know, to bring somebody. So even Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaches us that you don't silence people. Always resolve disputes. And his formula always consistently, this is how he win the hearts of the people. They call it in the business world, win-win formula. So you win, I win. So woman has to feel that she has been vindicated. Note that she is victimized. Self-esteem. And you don't undermine that. Now, Islam empowered women to such an extent gave her rights to own property. According to the rabbinical law, and it is in the Genesis, you can read that. A woman immediately transferred, has a, fa a brother passes away, leaving behind his wife. Now, she has no choice, she must marry the brother of the brother, the next person. She has no choice. And Allah reveals, the verse, You are not allowed to inherit woman like a property. She has a choice. She has the choice. She is a free person. Don't, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place said to the awliya, You are not to stop them from marrying marriage partners choosing their own marriage partners. Today, we force our daughters and even boys to marry someone they don't. As Ibn Taymiyyah said, you are not supposed to force your daughter or son to eat a food she or he doesn't want to eat. 
So how can you be forced for someone to choose somebody as a life partner, not just for one year, two years, life partnership, lifelong, if he or she doesn't want him. You see, so, and the Prophet showed that in, in example when a girl came to Rasulullah wasallam. You know, to show that, to teach us. She said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa My father has married me to his cousin. To his cousin's son. In order to raise his status. Family status. The Prophet called him and said, did you do that? He said, yes, I did not seek her permission. He said, this marriage is dissolved. You have no right to do that. It's not valid. And then the girl said, I choose, I accept the choice of my father, but I want to tell the women, Muslim women all over the world, nobody has a right to force them to marry someone, anyone they don't want to marry. So you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is the beautiful verse in the Quran, Inna al-Muslimin wal muslima Surah Al-Hazar. I urge you to read it where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says all the qualities, spiritual qualities, values that males and females should have. One by one. Islam, Iman, you know, Saum, Sadaqa, Qunud, meaning, you know, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submission to His will, patience, fortitude, Vikr, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of the male and female, male and female, male and female. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah has prepared for them tremendous rewards. So, la wuliyu amal amalim minkum. I will not let go in waste the work of anyone, whether male or female. Ba'lukum min ba'l, you proceed from one another. So there is no superiority for male over female, for husband or wife. Both of them are servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They must submit to the will of Allah. And this is the unity, respecting each other, loving each other, compassion to each other. Islam, Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so many traditions. That's why I designed this course. Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. Allah does not, Rasulullah never ever said to anybody, the best Muslim is the one who prays so much. Rather, the best Muslim is the one who is truthful. The best Muslim is the one who is honest. Best Muslim is this, is that. All of them referring to the values, the traits of character. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to read, read our sources and come back to the original teachings of this wonderful religion. It is indeed the most wonderful religion. There is nothing like Islam, as Muhammad has said. It is a perfect work of beauty. Nothing to add to it, nothing to take away from it. So let us understand it as it should be understood and apply, apply it in our individual life, in our spiritual life, in our moral life, in our social life, and our political life. Surely the condition of Muslims will improve. الحمد لله الذي هدانا إلى دين الإسلام وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا نبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد when the name of Rasulullah is mentioned let your tongue move heart move in appreciation of this benefactor Sallu ala Rasulillah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna kaamidun majid Let us also pray for those who have passed away One of our wonderful brothers And of course there are many others who have passed away And let us remember them all We don't mention the names May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on them May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save them from the trials of grave and hellfire and admit them into Jannatul Firdaus and may Allah unite all of them in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when we are resurrected. 
اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات لا تسال سو ريمبر ذا سيك اند سفرين اللهم يا رحمنا يا رحمان يا رب الناس اذهب الباس اشف انت الشافي لا شفاء الا شفاؤك شفاء لا يغادر سقما ربنا لا تدع لنا ذنبا الا غفرته ولا هما الا فرجته ولا دينا الا قضيته ولا مريضا الا شفيته ولا ميتا الا رحمته ولا حاجه ترضيك الا قضيتها يا ارحم الراحمين اقم الصلاه